everyone, I'm Nikki of Nikki Hearts Cards and I'm here today to do a fun tutorial. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. I had an Instagram poll on this card about how I created the gold accents and no one was able to figure this out. So I wanted to do a tutorial and had several requests on this tutorial to show you how another way that you could create gold accents. I started with regular Bristol smooth paper. I did some ink blending in Lost Shadow which is the new Distress Ink, and then I put it in an embossing folder. Now I learned this idea from Ravati and I'm going to make sure to link her YouTube channel below, but look at what this does. Oh my goodness. So we're going to use the taller side. So you can use either side of your emboss folder, but I'm going to use the side where the flowers stick up. I added some color to these flowers with spun sugar. It's another Distress Oxide and a small brush. This is an Altenew detail brush. So this is kind of like painting your embossing folder. And I'm going to go through and add pink to all the petals. We'll add some extra details to it, but because we're talking mainly about the gold, I'm just going to speed this up and show you how we're going to start making those gold accents. Okay, so I laid down that pink color and then I decided I was going to work on the gold. So this is watercolor. It's all to new metallic watercolor. And this is not watercolor paper. So just remember, I'm putting this very lightly. I've got a very fine brush and getting a pretty thick coat and going along these edges. And it does take a little bit of water to make sure you pick up some of your gold, but I'm going to make this as thick as possible. So I'm laying down a little bit of color and then I'm going to go back in with a really thick coat. I'm going to zoom in here for you. Okay, so you see that I'm just laying on a coat of this. You do have to go back and get more of your color, but it's very minimal water and lots of gold. And I'm gonna do several coats. And yes, this is meticulous, but it gives such a cool look to your um, card. So we're gonna go through and just add. This metallic watercolor is one of my favorites. I really love this gold color and I use it as splatters all the time, but I haven't been using it this way until I was taught by Ravati. Um, she sent me a card and I saw this element that she added and I just really loved it. So um, I've been practicing it and working on it. You can do this with something like embossing powder but to get such detail on an embossing folder like this, you would have to pretty much paint the embossing, something for the embossing powder to stick to. So you're still going to be painting like this if you're adding. Another option is use something like a Nuvo Drop that could go along and be gold, but I'm telling you, this gold metallic watercolor is the best color. It is so shiny, so metallic. It's just more um, of a like a luscious gold than anything else that I've used before. I'm going to speed up this frame that I'm painting and then I'm going to play you a little music so that if you do like watching um, watercolor or just painting in general, which I love doing, um, you will have that there. If not, you can skip ahead and we'll do the centers of the flowers and then we're going to do the amazing sentiment. If you don't remember, that sentiment was half gold and half pink. Now the nice thing is when you have too much on your brush, I've got all these centers of flowers. So if I got too much water or something, I can just place it on the center of a flower and uh, because I'll be filling those in later anyway.
So one tip for this is you'll see me going back and getting more color, um, but not doing a whole lot of wetting my brush. I put a drop of water in the pan of metallic watercolor, and that helps me have a little bit of liquid there without having to saturate my brush because I want to keep as much gold as I can on here. So it's always helpful to have a little drop of water over there versus actually sticking your paintbrush back in the water. So I'm able to just stick it in the bubble of water that I made in the metallic gold pan so I stuck a little bubble of water there and I can smooth it around get more color on my brush because it's staying slightly wet without actually sticking this brush back in a cup of water and rubbing off or washing off all of the gold so that you're hopefully not using as much of that gold paint as possible because I like to conserve my gold paint since I use this for so many things let's look at how we did the next part Okay, so I'm going to use the words, you are amazing, and yes, I'm putting lost shadow on them first because remember our background is made of lost shadow and I want this to match perfectly. So I'm going to put lost shadow over all of it and this is the distress oxide of lost shadow. Then I'm going to ink blend in the spun sugar and so we're going to ink blend it the gray first, then spun sugar second, which is the pink color. Once I've got it pink and matching my flowers, which I'm just doing, and you notice I'm not doing a whole lot on the lower half. I'm going to do the lower half of these letters gold, so I'm not worried if I don't get that completely covered. Now we're going to switch and use that same brush with our metallic paint, like I said, with very little water, and we're going to paint the lower half of this. Another way you could do this is with embossing powder if you wanted, but it looks so cool that it matches the rest of the card. So I'm just kind of picking a spot and making that my line almost like this is dipped in gold and then I'm going to use my paintbrush and make sure I do several coats on this to get it as metallic and gold looking as I can. Because there's so much more surface that I'm covering versus those little lines that I was doing, I do add a little bit more water to kind of get my line started. So where you um, take that water, you can kind of go back in and fill it in with more pigment. So I'm taking a little bit more water, making the line across the letters, and then I'm going back with more concentrated of the watercolor and adding it on top. And that seems to work a little bit better than just trying to go super concentrated right at the beginning. And I know these are sideways. It's easier for me to make a line across the letters when I have them tilted this way, but look at how good that looks. It's so beautiful. I just really love the gold. All right, for the rest of the card, I want to show you how, what colors I used and how we kind of put it together. I went in and used the Distress Ink in lost shadow so this is the same color as the background it's a different formulation so you can see those are definitely different colors so depending on what color gray and how you're going to use your ink may depend on whether you want the distress ink or the oxide but they look great together so i'm doing the ink on the leaves and then we're going to add some details to our pink flowers now you could leave it this way or you could add extra details. I'm always an add extra details person, so I'm gonna show you how I made these flowers look even more realistic. So for more detail in your flowers, you can always grab a pencil. So this is the um, Faber-Castell Polychromos, who knows if I'm saying that correctly, but it's really easy on a flower to follow the already indented lines on this embossing folder. That tends to add some depth to those and make it look really cool. And I just really love it that all the work is kind of done for you. If you follow those lines, that's kind of where the shadows of a flower are anyway. So I'm taking this darker colored pencil and I'm just basically filling in where they've already indented for there to be shadows. And it just gives that extra little detail to your flowers that you will probably notice. Um, and people will know there's something different. They just may not be able to put their finger on what it is about those flowers that makes them stand out so well. And one of my favorite things to add to cards is this foam. It's a double-sided adhesive foam. And especially if you're doing something with watercolor, if you're doing something with an embossing plate and you don't have your card completely flat, adding that extra foam really flattens out your card. Now these are from scrapbook.com. Of course, we'll link it in the um, description, but I just want you to know that if you're worried about your card warping or anything like that, that using that foam on the back can really help. This is one of my favorite things to do with cards. 
So now that I have that popped up on foam, I wanted to create a background that we could pop up the card so we'd have like a little um, layer around it, but I didn't have any cardstock that matched Lost Shadow. So what I'm doing is going around and ink blending the edge of this cardstock to make it match perfectly. And that's something that you can always do, especially if you're only doing a small area, you can ink blend that edge and just create your own color cardstock. So that's what I did to pop this up. Okay, and here's how that looks. So make sure this card, I actually did a giveaway on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, all of the fun social media channels, I'm gonna link them all in the description. But I do giveaways and different things on each channel. So just make sure you do that. Here's how the card comes together. I think this is just a great way to add some gold details. Yes, it's a little meticulous, but the effect is amazing. So I enjoyed being here with you today. Make sure that you click the like and subscribe button and check out the description for all the details and supplies that I used on this card. I'm so happy to have you here and I hope to see you again on the channel soon. I'm going to pop up a video I think that you would enjoy. Have a great day. Bye!